dolphin uh, was proposed about 10 years ago, and we had about three generations of students that went through. This is the culmination of 250 students working over five years. In a way, it's our child that we've, we've built and we're putting out into the world for it to live on its own. The three, four of us would be in the basement 40 hours a week, you know, barely coming out to see the light kind of a thing. It will always be a moment of pride for me because how many people can say that uh, they've put something into space? This is Elfin. This is actually a mass model, and as you can see, it's just the size of a loaf of bread. ELFIN is an acronym for the Electron Losses in Fields Investigation, and as the name suggests, we'll be studying the precipitation processes of energetic electrons and ions as they come out of the radiation belts. So we'll be looking into that with two different instruments that we've built. Uh, one is an energetic particle detector, and another is a flux gate magnetometer. Space weather from a top-down view is really the Earth's response to the sun's driving forces, and the sun puts off a strong stream of charged particles known as a solar wind. So as the solar activity waxes and wanes, uh, space weather also increases and decreases in activity and severity. There have been a number of near misses, uh, particularly with Apollo missions. There have been massive storms from the sun that have just barely missed and would have been devastating. The best way to protect people from space weather is actually to predict when space weather events are going to happen. Information gained in these type of studies uh, will allow us to better model and predict future space weather forecasts, and this is crucial if we ever want to venture into space. Our space physicists have a very nice way of telling what's going on out in space. All we have to do is look at our images of the aurora, because really the aurora is a sort of a uh, TV screen of what happens uh, out in space. It's going to be really, really exciting because there's just so much emotion and so much history to this. A lot of people had really poured their undergraduate years into a project like this, and uh, to see it finally launch, it's, it's, it's something that a lot of people are looking forward to. There were some moments here that I struggled academically. Having to take all upper division classes plus research on top of that, it's um, maybe too much time in the lab. <laughs> but in the end, you know, I'm, I'm putting a satellite into space. I think that Elfin really helped me learn what it meant to be on a, like a real engineering team. So Thermal Team is this kind of in a special case where we didn't really have um, an expert kind of here on campus to talk to. Um, it also meant that we had to learn a whole new software that really no one else was using. You need to be available, you need to solve problems, you need to be the one willing to put your face out there and take the hit if things go wrong. Oh, it is very exciting to see um, the difference between the students when they come in versus when they go out of the project. They stand on their own two feet when they go out. They speak like professionals, and they expect people to treat them as professionals. One way Elfin has opened my eyes is that I can have students in the future that I'm mentoring through research using the actual data from the satellite that I helped build. By launching Elfin, we are preparing UCLA towards the future of space exploration uh, in terms of being able to launch an end-to-end -end mission from UCLA.